working here at William Ricketts Anchi, the environment is, is most of the job that, um, that I love. Everywhere around here, you can just smell the freshness. Um, after a bit of rain, it just smells beautiful. Uh, the birds at the moment that um, you may be able to hear, there's uh, just everything is alive here. And it just, uh, I think that's what people love about it. They, they come from a stressed ar arrangement wherever they're living. And the sanctuary is all about contemplation and trying to um, yeah, get rid of the cares of the day and just come and enjoy being here. And I think that people really, really do love coming to this environment. Melbourne lie the low altitude Dandenong mountain range, covered with lush vegetation featuring every possible shade of green. During the 20s, artist William Ricketts of the Arts and Crafts movement settled down among these hills. There he created his life's work a group of clay sculptures honouring the Aboriginal people. The Aboriginals are the first inhabitants of the Australian continent. They've been living in the country for more than 50,000 years. Pandemics and the slaughter of this people by British colonists brought their number from 1 million down to 60,000 in the 1920s. The 92 statues in the area blend into the environment and invite visitors to escape and to take a spiritual walk among the giant eucalyptuses. Paul Bennett has long been in touch with the artist. Nowadays, he's the curator of this open-air museum that covers almost two hectares, a beautiful and this? peaceful place he shares with visitors. So, can you head up in? Okay. This sculpture is called Earthly Mother, and it, it represented everything good about um, oh, everything good about everything. Really, it, Bill just loved it. The um, the the mum, the kids. Um, it represents the flowing of life, um, getting back into the the Aboriginal mythology. Everything that they did was in oneness with Earth as well. So this one sculpture really depicts it very well. It's about um, the environment all being one. It's a wholeness, the water flowing through the sculptures, and it was just a really big part of the way that he, um, he tried to describe everything that comes out of the earth eventually flows back into the earth. During the 50s, William Ricketts made several trips to the centre of Australia to meet Aboriginal tribes. That's when he understood the dangers threatening the environment and the natives and the way they had been discriminated against. Aboriginals respect their ancestors who created the earth. According to their beliefs, these men and women then blended into the environment and became rocks, trees or animals. Inspired by these animistic beliefs, the sculptor followed that philosophy that sees man as a part of something bigger in harmony with nature. Each sculpture represents an aspect of life and Aboriginal beliefs that the artist tried to honour. William gave a commitment to the people in Central Australia that he sculpted. He was 50 years ahead of his time when it came to um, the rights of First Nations peoples and he was very, very vocal uh, about how that uh, the governments were doing things wrong to the Indigenous peoples. I had a preconceived idea of the Aboriginals and after meeting Bill and looking at just the way he explained the, the, the people that he'd met, 
it got me thinking a different way than what I used to think and, uh, and that's probably what happens with a lot of the other people that come here. William uh, made this work to, it's called Australia Crucified, and it was to depict all the forests that had been burnt. Uh, the tree is the emblem of all our forest. The sacrifice of all the animals that actually were killed every time there's a bit of logging going on. And uh, it's a very powerful uh, symbol of uh, what's happening with our forests and to the environment in Australia. He did not believe he was an artist. It, um, he believed that this was just a, a, a God-given gift. So his artistic goal was to show it to the world um, you know, and through his medium of clay, the plight of the animals and the, um, the Australian Aboriginal people. Sculptures are built in amongst the tree roots of a, of a giant mountain ash. William wanted to make everything look like it was part of the environment and the way that he blended the sculptures with rocks within the, the background and uh, uh, everything just moulded into each other and that's what he was trying to achieve. Most of the sculptures are of one colour, um, which is just a natural white ball colour that's just, just coloured over years, a bit of patina. But when he wanted to highlight certain works, he would use an orca and he would paint it on before it was uh, fired. He didn't use glazes um, in the outside works because they wouldn't adhere and the, the mosses and lichens would not, um, wouldn't grow on them. The various pieces have been arranged so as to surprise. Sometimes they're hidden at the turn of the road or covered by vegetation little by little. The artist didn't leave anything to chance. William Rickett, the last couple of years of his life, he showed me what he wanted to do with the sculptures, how to prepare, how to um, not take too much moss away, not to do too much as actually do le lease instead of more. It's a fulfilling job, but it's, it's very intense with what you need to do and um, just keeping banks enough, uh, you know, damp enough to, uh, to actually keep the mosses alive so the banks don't collapse. Working here at William Ricketts Sanchi, the environment is, is most of the job that, um, that I love. Everywhere around here, you can just smell the freshness. Um, after a bit of rain, it just smells beautiful. Oh, the birds at the moment that um, you may be able to hear, there's uh, just everything is alive here. And it just, uh, I think that's what people love about it. They, they come from a stressed ar arrangement wherever they're living. And the sanctuary is all about contemplation and trying to um, yeah, get rid of the cares of the day and just come and enjoy being here. And I think that people really, really do love coming to this environment. Mm-hmm.